Hello friends, once again, welcome to Tech with us. Friends, first of all, I would like to thank you for the overwhelming response on this scan protocol series. I have released so far seven videos in this series. Right from the basics of CAN protocol, we had discussed how CAN bus works, the concept of dominant and recessive bit. And then we had understood what is the arbitration and various CAN frame formats. In the comment section, many of you have requested me to explain the concept of transmitting more than 8 bytes on CAN bus. So here in this video, let's discuss this topic in detail. So let's start. First of all, we need to understand what is the need to send more than 8 bytes using CAN protocol. Friends, CAN is meant to transmit and receive short messages. For example, vehicle speed, ignition status, fuel status and so on. So during the vehicle normal operation, due to the available bandwidth and communication speed, it is not recommended to send large amount of data. It could potentially block the entire bus and there will be a possibility to miss out an important message. So where do we need this? The answer is during diagnostics. While doing diagnostics, many times it is required to read and write large amount of data from an ECU. So limiting the payload to 8 bytes is not sufficient. We had discussed this standard data frame which consists of multiple fields like arbitration field, control field, data, CRC and acknowledgement field. Let's focus on the data field which contains 8 bytes of message payload. CAN protocol segments or break longer CAN message frames into multiple frames. It uses CAN TP or CAN transport protocol to do this. You can observe the connection in this diagram. There are two ways by which PDUR is connected via interface module. One is directly and other is via CAN TP. So for shorter messages, there is no need of CAN TP and only message contains more than 8 bytes are sent via CAN TP. With respect to this video, I think this much information is sufficient to know. If you want to learn more about Otosar and Comstech, let me know in the comment box. I will make a separate video on this topic. According to the CAN TP, there are four types of frame. Single frame, first frame, consecutive frame and flow control frame. Single frame is the unsegmented message which can be fit into single frame. In single frame, you can see the first byte is used as a frame header in which most significant 4 bits are used as identifier. For single frame, its value is 0. And the lower nibble is used to indicate single frame data length which can be maximum up to 7 bytes. Then we have first frame which is the first frame of segmented message. The identifier value of first frame is 1 and next 12 bits contains the length of the complete data. For example, let's say sender wants to transmit 50 bytes. So the first frame will look something like this. First frame will contain first 6 bytes of the data out of 50 bytes. Frames followed by the first frame from the sender are called consecutive frames. These frames are used to send the remaining amount of data after the first frame. 2 is the indication for consecutive frame which is followed by the frame sequence number which can have values from 0 to 15. Can TP consider first frame with sequence number 0? Once the sequence number reaches to 15, it will roll over. Receiver will use this sequence number to keep a track of incoming data. Then the final type of frame we have is flow control frame. During normal CAN transaction, there is no concept of separate frame for acknowledgement. But for multi-frame transaction, we have acknowledgement mechanism from receiver. 
which is sent after the first frame is received. 3 is the indication for flow control frame. As the name suggests, it is used to control the flow of data and contains three important information. Flow control flag, block size and separation time. Flow control flag can contain three values depending on the readiness of the receiver to receive the data. Block size indicates the number of bytes that the server can send continuously without waiting for the next flow control frame from the receiver. And the third byte contains the information about the separation time between the consecutive frames. This is required as the clock speed of server and client can be different. So friends, here we come to end of this video. Hope the content is helpful for you. For more updates, do consider subscribing my channel. Thanks for watching.